We are now going to show how easy it is to synchronise the design and detailing of a building by exchanging a model between Advanced Steel and Advanced Design. Starting off in Advanced Steel, we create a 3D model of our steel frame building. Connecting the steel elements to one another by node simplifies the conversion of the 3D CAD model in Advanced Steel to an analytical model in Advanced Design. Here we are finishing off the bracing with some L sections from the cross sections library. Once the model has been built, we export the file using the Great Egg BIM file transfer system. We can now import the model into Advanced Design. The model will be imported into Advanced Design exactly as it is in Advanced Steel, with all the correct member lengths and cross sections. We can check this column for example, which is an IPE 450, just as it is in Advanced Steel. Now we will add some loads, starting with snow load. We simply need to create a snow load load case, then pick a snow region and set the altitude. Launch automatic generation and all the required snow loads are created, including normal snow and exceptional snow. We will now do the same for wind loads. We create the load case, set the parameters such as wind speed region and terrain category. Then we launch the automatic generation and we get all the required wind loading on the building for each wind direction. Now we need to create combination load cases. With the combination generator, Eurocode load combinations for ultimate limit state and serviceability limit state can be created instantly. Before running the calculation, we want to make a change to the model. This bracing is intersecting a window, so we will remove these elements and create a new bracing type. We will change this member's cross section and create a rigid connection to the adjacent members. Now we can launch the calculation. The calculation sequence will include a finite element calculation plus a steel section optimization. So first advanced design will calculate displacements, forces and stresses and then it will perform all the checks from Eurocode 3 including section capacity, deflection, buckling and lateral torsional buckling and it will calculate the work ratio on every member so we can see whether we can reduce the section size or if we need to increase them. The calculation is now complete so let's have a look at the section optimization table which gives the maximum work ratio for each cross section type in the model. If the work ratio is too high or too low a better section is suggested. The sections highlighted in red are failing one of the design checks, so a bigger section is suggested. Those highlighted in blue could be replaced by a smaller section.
We can accept all the suggested solutions and we can also choose alternatives for any of the cross sections. Since we have changed the sections, this will change the self-weight load and affect the finite element results. So we should do the calculations again using the updated section properties. Once the calculation is complete, we can check the section optimization table again. We can see that the work ratios are now much better. One of the sections is in blue because its work ratio is low, but this is already the smallest cross section of its type, so an alternative is suggested. Now that we have completed our modifications and we are satisfied that the sections are adequate, we are ready to send the model back to Advanced Steel using the Greatec BIM transfer system. Now we need to import the model back into Advanced Steel, but we want to see what has changed. Greatec BIM synchronization allows us to see what changes are about to be imported into the model. We can decide which changes to accept before importing and updating the model. For instance, the bracing element shown here has been deleted in Advanced Design, and if we accept, this will be deleted in Advanced Steel too. All steel members are listed and coloured to indicate whether the section is to be unchanged, modified, added or deleted. We can accept all changes and import the model. The steel members are all connected at the ends, but they may be overlapping where they meet. So we will reposition the rafters and purlins, so that the purlins sit on top of the rafters. The selection filter is a powerful search tool that helps you locate and select specific objects quickly. It can be extremely useful when working on a large and complex model. First, we will select all the rafters. And modify their offset so that they are positioned below their system line. Then we select all the purlins. And position them above their system line. By clicking on a flag at a joint, we can see what forces exist at that joint as calculated in advanced design. The connected members are shown diagrammatically. The results shown in the table belong to the selected member which is highlighted in red in the diagram. Now we will add a beam to column connection from the connection vault. A default arrangement of plates and bolts is applied to the connected beam and column. We can make any modifications we like to these components. Here we will add some stiffeners. And then we will check the joint design calculations. The 
The forces of the member ends are already available for the joint design calculations. We have the option to directly type in the forces or to accept the forces calculated by advanced design. We run the calculation and immediately see that one of the checks has failed. So let's change the thickness of the end plate and run the check again. This time it passed. Each time a joint design check is run, a detailed report is produced, which describes all the calculations that have been carried out on the joint according to the chosen design code. In this case it is EC3. If any check has failed, this will be highlighted in red, so it is easy to find the relevant calculation, which may help you determine the most efficient way to strengthen the connection. Now that we are satisfied with the connection, we will save the project and produce some drawings. Before creating the drawings, we need to number all the objects in the model. Then, after selecting everything connecting to the joint, we can create detailed drawings of all the components. A vast range of page layout templates are available. The details are automatically labelled and dimensioned, and each detailed drawing is created as an individual DWG file, which can be previewed as shown here. The drawing layout may be customised to suit specific requirements. The drawings we have created are listed in the Document Manager. The Document Manager lists all drawings created from the model. Any existing document can be easily viewed in the Preview tab. From here you can update or delete drawings or open their DWG file for editing. Here too is where you can create batch plots of your drawings. Suppose we make a modification to the connection after the drawings have been produced. Here we are adding a chamfer to one of the stiffeners. When we return to the document manager, the drawing of the modified object has been flagged as requiring an update. We want to mark this as a revision, so we select Update Revision and add some notes about the revision. A backup is saved of the original drawing. The drawing now indicates the time of the revision. A detailed SOLIS document can be produced for the connected sections and exported in various formats. Now we will hide the nodes by switching off their layer. Different objects are assigned to different layers so it is easy to display only what you want to see. And finally we will copy the same connection to other parts of the model. Advanced Steel offers many time-saving tools to avoid repeating the same task more than once, such as the ability to copy existing connections and create connections using previously defined templates. That concludes this presentation, highlighting the powerful bi-directional link between advanced design and advanced steel.